Education is a passport to the future, but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. What will happen to a bum traffic in multi-home environment, receipt of duplicate traffic at the scene, bum traffic get looped? Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video we'll discuss about eVPN route type 4, the Ethernet segment route. Using this Ethernet segment route, we'll address this and how to handle bum traffic in the multi-home network. EVPN support protocol based on multi-homing. So there is no need of hardware based multi-homing solution. Multi-homing switches do not need any kind of inter-chassis links. EVPN multi-homing requires the support for type 1 and type 4 routes. You can check on my previous video on Ethernet auto discovery route, route type 1 in the link in above. In a multi-home network, the PE or leaf connected to the same Ethernet segment can automatically discover each other with the help of exchange of Ethernet segment routes. BGP advertisement that advertise the Ether segment route also carries the ES import route. The Ethernet segment route filtering is done such that the Ether segment route is imported only by the PE that are multi-home to the same Ethernet segment. To that, the PE are multi-homed are the same Ethernet segment. To that end, each PE that is connected to a particular Ethernet segment construct an import filtering rule to the import or route that carries ES import route target, which is construct from that ESI. If you see here in this capture, the ESI value 00112233, the 10 octet ESI value, from this, the 6 octet has been imposed in the ES import. So that is the reason why the, the ES import now transitive extended community carries with the Ethernet segment route. When used, it enabled all the PEs connected to the same multi-home site to import the Ethernet segment route. The value automatically derived from the ES type. It can be type 1, type 2 or type 3 by encoding the higher 6 or 9 octet. So this route type 4 carries the route distinguisher which identifies the leaf ESI, configured ESI, then it has the IP address length and the IP address which is the advertising P or the originating leaf. Consider a C that is host or a router that is multi-home directly to more than one P in an eVPN instance. One of the Ethernet tags may be configured on the Ethernet segment. The default procedure for DF selection, when PE discovers the ESI to the attached Ethernet segment, it advertises an Ethernet segment route associated with the ES import extended community. So leaf one advertise to leaf two and leaf three. So leaf three will drop it because the ES import will be fetched from the Ethernet segment. The same thing done by leaf 2 which we send it to leaf 3 and leaf 1. Once they discover each other, the PE then starts the timer. The default timer is 3 seconds to allow the reception of the Ethernet segment routes from PE nodes connected on the same Ethernet segment. This timer should be same across all the PEs connected to the same Ethernet segment. So when the timer expires, each PE builds an order list of IP address of all the PE nodes connected to the Ethernet segment. Each IP address in the list is extracted from the originator router IP address field of the Ethernet segment route, starting with zero as the ordinal for the PE with the numerically lowest IP address. So in this case, the leaf one becomes the DF and uh, based on the lowest IP address. In case of link or the port failure, the affected PE withdraws the Ethernet segment route. This will re-trigger the service craving. In this scenario, only one of the PE referred to as the designated forwarder in this responsible for certain actions such as sending multicast, broadcast, unknown unicast for a, on a given Ethernet tag for a particular Ethernet segment to the CE. Flooding unknown unicast traffic, the traffic which is PE does not know the destination MAC address on a given Ethernet tag on a particular Ethernet segment to the PE. If the environment requires flooding of unknown unicast, it will flood. So this issue will be addressed by the designated forwarder. So the designated forwarder will forward that packet when it receives from the another CE forward to the host or the CE. Similarly, the non-designated forwarder will block it. So there is an issue with active-active multi-homing split horizon issue. In this split horizon example, the, the bump traffic is forwarded into the local site the DF filtering is required in this case because any active leaf can forward bump traffic out of the core and back to the designated forwarder. 
In case of MPLS, the non-designated forwarder replicates the bump traffic and based on the local bias, looking at the source tunnel IP, it identifies the ESI and drop the packet at the DF. In case of MPLS, ingress replicates bump traffic, impose a transport label, IMIT label and the ESI label. Based on this, when it receives, it will check that the ESI label as self-originated and drop the traffic. So you can refer to my previous video, Ethernet AD route to where I explain this in more detail. P that only supports single homing. In a multi-homing scenario, we discuss about route type 4, how it discovers, how it elects the designated forwarder. Also, in a multi-homing scenario, route type 1 is needed for to use the aliasing. Also, Ethernet ES auto discovery route is being used for split horizon. And also, we have mass withdrawal feature, which is based out in route type 1 which is done with the per ESI Ethernet auto discovery route. For a single homing P to fully operated with a multi homing P, Ethernet auto discovery routes for the fast convergence and the backup path being used. But for a single active, we don't use any kind of Ethernet segment routes. Thank you for watching this video. Please share your feedback and questions in the comment box. I'll get back to you.